So, this week's video is something very, very interesting. This week's video is going to be me reading five books in the suspense, thriller, horror, psychological thriller book genres. I don't really know what the difference is between all of them. All I know is that this is going to be a week where I read a bunch of books that are in those genres and those categories. There's horror, there's thriller, there's suspense, and there's psychological thrillers. I picked very very interesting books, books that I have seen everywhere all the time. Everywhere you look you will find these books if you look up for recommendations for any of these genres and I personally don't read a lot of those genres. This is very much me stepping out of my comfort zone and trying something new because this genre is not for me. I'm a girl who enjoys romance and fantasy and dystopian and YA and stuff like that and so this this week this week is going to be very interesting but I hope you enjoy. I don't really know how it's gonna go. I don't know if I'm gonna DNF anything. I hope not because I'm kind of genuinely excited to read something that's out of my comfort zone and to try to help me broaden my horizons. So without further rambling, let's just get on with this video and hope it goes well without me DNFing a book because we know that's a theme in the in the genre videos that I always tend to DNF a book. I hope, I hope it doesn't happen this week so Let's see, let's see if it does. I'm, I'm, I'm real nervous. I'm real nervous. Hello, today is the very first start to the I read thriller horror books, psychological thrillers books for five days, so basically for a week. I have five books as I said in the intro that I will be reading and today I started with None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. Jewell? I don't know how to say this last name. Regardless, anyways, I started and finished this book in one sitting today. I sure did. Mm -hmm. This book is about this girl, this woman, who, oh, I don't know how to describe it. It's very disturbed. I give it, I give it 3.75 stars. It, it, it's very captivating in a disturbing way because you feel like you're watching a train wreck or like, you know, when you're driving past a car wreck and you have to turn your head and look, like physically look at the, at the car wreck, even though you don't want to, that's what this felt like. So it's about this girl who is having her 45th birthday at a restaurant. And in that very same restaurant, there's another girl who's having her birthday as well. They both have birthdays on the same day. They were born in the same hospital. So they meet and she's like, hey, birthday twin, I'm your birthday twin, whatever. And then it takes this turn because one of them is a podcaster who makes podcasts about these women who like change their lives and turn their lives around. And the first girl tells her, hey, wouldn't it be more interesting if you wrote a, if you made a podcast about someone who is just beginning to change their life instead of already has gone through the entirety of the change so that's how they get connected and it just goes south severely south from the very beginning to the very end it's very interesting i think this is one of the very first like actual thriller horror -y books that I've read in a very long time so it felt very different I mean obviously I read Verity in the beginning of this year which feels like a blur but this felt a lot more like there was a lot more high stakes to this one like actually life-threatening things happening in this one I know it wasn't Verity too but Verity felt a little more young adult where this one feels very adult and feels very strange and, un and like it makes you uneasy it makes you like cringe physically I had multiple moments where I was reading this where I was like oh my god I can't believe this woman is actually that unhinged because she is she's very unhinged I enjoyed it I don't know if it will be my favorite because the ending kind of threw me I didn't like the ending all that much I'm not gonna lie I felt it was very lackluster definitely didn't think I would actually feel uneasy reading this book but I did I had a lot of emotions reading this book from like disgust and like uneasiness and disbelief and a bunch of stuff I actually yeah I don't know how I feel about the ending that's why I gave it 3.75 stars actually no I think I gave it 3.5 stars yeah I think I gave it 3.5 stars I docked off the 0.25 because of the ending because I didn't like the ending at all I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time coming off of this wave after I finished these five books because I feel like 
I'm going to become very distrustful and like, like anxious and stressed. I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, so that was Monday's pick today. Finished it, read it in one sitting, enjoyed it, kept my attention, kept me captivated. Um, the storytelling was really nice. I liked the writing and there's like, it has like segments of a documentary style thing because then you get the story. That's how you get the story. You get the story basically told in a podcast, Netflix docu-series format. So you have like these interviews with people and very interesting, very, very interesting. Um, haven't read a book like this ever before. So I don't know how to like compare it to other books other than the fact that I enjoyed it and I read it very quickly. The book that I will be reading tomorrow, The Last Word by Taylor Adams. I would be very surprised if you haven't seen this book floating around on booktube and booktalk and all of these places. This book basically I think is about this girl who leaves a one star rating on a book on like Goodreads or something and the author tracks her down and asks her to take down the review or asks them to take down the review and they refuse and a bunch of stuff happens from there. I think that's what this book is about. That feels a little bit more like my life. I do leave a lot of negative reviews, not a lot, but I've left some negative reviews in my day. So that makes me a little bit anxious to like actually apply this to my life. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm interested to see because this is a very different genre for me. I haven't really read a lot of like thriller, horror, uh, psychological thriller, psychological torment type of books. I don't really gravitate towards that genre. So this will be very interesting. None of this is true book was 364 pages, I believe. And this one is 337. So a little less, but like I said, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. I heard a lot of people rave about this and actually really like this, so. Last Word by Taylor Adams. I spent the entire morning reading this. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if the way I feel about it is because I read None of This Is True yesterday, so this feels a little bit lackluster for some reason. I don't know why. I enjoyed it. The plot twist at the end had me shook. I literally had, I was sitting there with my mouth open like in shock for a good 30 seconds. It's an interesting premise and giving it what I gave it makes me nervous because obviously the premise of the story is that the there's like a girl who gives a book a one-star review and says that it's the worst book she's ever read and it's a horror like thriller book and the author like reaches out and asks her to take down the review and she refuses to and then shit goes down from there so giving this 3.5 stars had me a little bit nervous because i'm like mm, it's about an author who comes out after a bad review not that 3.5 stars is a bad review i can say with my whole chest that i've never read a book anything like this ever uh the idea is very interesting the concept is very interesting the writing is nice i enjoyed it it just felt a little bit flat for me i don't know why I definitely don't think it's the best thriller book I've ever read. I don't think it's the best horror book, the best psychological thriller book that I've ever read. It's definitely a little bit, like it makes me feel uneasy because obviously I'm a reader and I review books all the time and I leave bad reviews all the time. Um, so it makes me a little bit nervous. And I had a moment where I was like, maybe I should stop reviewing books in general because that makes me a little nervous now. Uh, but obviously none of these authors are actually gonna hunt you down for giving them a bad review hopefully not there's a lot of twists and turns and i felt like it got a little bit too much because then like things kept kept happening and i got lost in the plot for, for a second and then i found my way back and then there was another twist another turn and i know that's how thrillers usually go um but i would just have preferred a little bit more i don't know i don't know i don't know i gave it 3.5 stars i enjoyed it um, it was interesting. It was entertaining. It kept my attention. It didn't make me bored. Um, 
as far as thrillers go, it's definitely not bad, but it's not great either. I like the little acknowledgement at the back where um, the author thanks the readers and tells them like, hey, I'm not coming after you if you leave a bad review because that really made me nervous. I'm glad I read it and now I know what people are talking about because this was very hyped for a few months on booktube and booktalk and everywhere else. That was 3.5 stars. Now the next book I'm picking up, which I will pick up tomorrow, um, will be will be The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides? Michaelides? I don't know how to say his last name, but yeah, I don't know what this book is about, to be honest, and I'm nervous to check it. I'm actually getting a little bit uneasy reading all of these horror psychological thriller books because now I feel a little bit on edge, but it is what it is. This book is 323 pages. Um, I believe this author just came out with a book called The Fury, I think, right? I don't know. Um, I've heard a lot of things about this. This book gets mentioned a lot when there's um, like talk of horror thriller books. I don't know what this book is about at all. I don't see myself. It says criminal psychotherapist. So there's a criminal psychotherapist in here somewhere and it's set in North London. So I, I don't know. Maybe this takes place in like a an insane asylum or an asylum in general. I'm not really sure to be honest or maybe a rehab or a therapy place. I don't know. I don't know, but it makes me a little bit uneasy. I am, mm, the cover gives very horror movie vibes and makes me nervous, but I've heard very good things about Alex's writing and that his stories always are very good and they keep you on your toes and they keep you entertained. I'm excited for this, but kind of nervous because now I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to feel my anxiety reach a new level. Every time I finish a, a thriller book, I'm like, mm, these are things I did not think about before, nor did I want to begin thinking about, but yeah, here I am. This will be the third one. I can't believe I'm reading this many thrillers. I never ever read thrillers, ever, really, honestly, or this often ever, or this many in a year. Never happens. So this feels very strange, but you gotta brighten your horizons, I guess. First time for everything, right? Today is Wednesday. Today I was meant to read The Silent Patient by James, insert last name because I can't say it. I am so disappointed to say this, but y'all have to have seen this coming. This always happens in almost every, I think it's happened in every genre video that I've done. To explain, I have decided after reading 75 pages of The Silent Patient to DNF it. It's not bad. It's not good either. I don't know how to explain it. It's not my type. It's not my type of book. It's not my type of narration. Reading those 75 pages felt like homework, which I hate. I don't want to read a book where I feel like I'm doing homework. It just feels like it's dragging and it feels like it's not capturing my attention and that's not what I want from a thriller. I don't find it scary. I don't think it's going to be scary. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just don't feel like this is a book that I'm going to like. And I know a lot of people say that this is one of their favorite thrillers of all time. And I did have a moment where I was like, maybe I should just give it another go just because so many people love this book. I'm not that person. I've never been that person. If I don't like a book, um, usually I'm the first one to say just DNF and move on because life is too short to read books that we don't want to read. And I don't want to use my hobby as like a homework type of thing. If I continued reading this, then it would have felt like homework and it would have felt like I was reading a class assignment that I did not want to read. And then it would put me in a reading slump and I didn't want that for myself or for anyone. This is your sign if you want to DNF a book. I have no shame in DNFing books. As we all know on this channel, I DNF books pretty frequently. I really wanted to like this. I really, really did want to like this. I wanted to like every single thriller that I read in this book. This was one of the least likely that I thought I would DNF, but here we are. Don't like the premise, don't like the story, don't like the concept, don't like the characters, don't like the storytelling. It just feels like it drags on and we're talking about like descriptions for like pages on pages and pages and I just don't find any of the characters interesting enough. For tomorrow, the book that I will be picking up is one that I am very, very excited for because this author is known for their horror thriller books psychological thriller, I think. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, a lot of people praise this author for writing really good horror books, thriller books. Um, is there a difference between the two? 
I think they're the same thing. I'm just saying synonyms. I don't know. Rock, paper, scissors by Alice Feeney. Uh, I don't know what this book is about, to be honest. No idea. Don't really care to find out what it's about, to be honest. Um, all I know is that Alice Feeney is known for writing the most amazing thriller books. That's what I know. I know a lot of people praise Alice's writing. They love her storytelling and they always say that her, her books always come up first when you look up like thriller book recommendations. Very excited about this and I hope it doesn't let me down. This book is 291 pages, which, which would be the shortest that I've read so far. Um, makes me a little bit nervous, but the pages are a little bit longer than usual, so maybe that's why. Um, but yeah, I will be starting this tomorrow and I'm excited for it. I don't know what this is about. All I know is that Alice Feeney is the queen of horror thriller books, so I'm excited to give this a go. and I have officially finished Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney and I am amazed. I am amazed. I think I'm giving this four stars but like a high four stars. You know like if I could give it a 4.10 I would. It took me by surprise completely. I didn't expect anything that was happening in here. Basically it's about this woman and this man who go on this trip to revive their marriage and the wife basically writes letters every anniversary for the husband. The twists and turns in this one, crazy. Every time I thought I knew what was going on, I did not know what was going on. I was lost in the sauce. The twists within specifically the last 50 pages, I think, were so well done, so beautiful. I think this might be my favorite thriller that I've read so far this year because just the, the sheer excellence, and I'm not giving it five stars, so it's not like the best book I've ever read, but it's not, it's, it's just so well done. Like within the 290 something pages that you have in this book, everything flips on its head. Everything is upside down. Everything is not what you think it is. You think you know what's going on and you think you figured out the plot and you think everything is revealed and then it's not and then something else is revealed and it's actually not the thing you were expecting it to be. I enjoyed this so much. It kept me entertained. It kept me horrified. It kept me like, like the last, ooh, the last like 25 pages. I was shocked. I sat there like mouth wide open while reading because I was so shook at what was happening in front of my eyes and what I was reading. Genuinely enjoyed it. Five, uh, four stars, but like a high, like a 4.15 stars. Um, yeah, I'm genuinely like, I'm still mind boggled. I'm still mind boggled by how beautiful the writing is and how well the story flows and how you think, like they spent this entire book building the story in your head that you think you know what's going on and you think you you think you know what's gonna happen and i was like literally the entire time i was like this is so silly like this is a typical formula for a thriller like you know what's gonna happen no you don't you don't know what's gonna happen i genuinely think this is my this might be my favorite thriller that i've ever read um as of right now, just because of the twists and the turns and the psychological aspect to it and the like the sheep like it's just excellent. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a thriller. It's so distur oh the ending. It's so beautiful. So that is the fourth book ish, I guess, the third book in this challenge done. So then that leaves us for the last book of this challenge that I will be reading tomorrow on Friday, which will be The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. Uh his mistress is dead, his wife is his only hope. I have no idea what this is about, to be honest. I just know that I see this literally everywhere when I go book shopping. I see it at Barnes and Noble, I see it in the thriller section at Target, and the like in the book section. Um, all I know is that a lot of people praise this book and I've heard a lot of people talk about it. I'm excited to pick it up, I'm excited to see what happens, although I'm beginning to, to sense that I'm beginning to feel a little bit like an underlying tone of disturbance within my energy. I know that sounds silly, but like I go through my day-to-day -day lives after reading these books and I'm like, something is gonna happen. Like something is wrong, somebody's lying, something is happening. That might be my trust issues, but I don't know. Um, 
I feel very uneasy. I'm excited to finish this so I can finish with this challenge. This video has been a good like step out of your comfort zone like challenge for myself because I never really like gravitate towards horror or thrillers or psychological thrillers or suspense or anything like that. I like reading fantasy. I like reading dystopian books. I like reading YA. I like reading romance most of all. Um, stuff like that. So I never really gravitate outside of my comfort zone and actually pick up like dark academia or horror or thriller or suspense or anything like that. So I think these types of genre videos always help me to step on my comfort zone and try different genres and see what I like and what I don't like. If you have any thriller recommendations, suspense recommendations, let me know down below. I'll pick them up probably. Um, but yeah, this I'm excited to pick up. Also, I've noticed a theme within all of these books, I think, so far. Most of the characters are a little bit older. They're like in their 30s or in their 40s. Like the birthday twin, I think she was turning 45. I think I see in here, this one says that the main character is 33. So um, I like that. I like reading about characters that are a little bit older because most of the books I read are about younger people, like in their 20s or in their teen years. So it's interesting to pick up a book about people who are married and who are unhappy or things like that. Reading these books in one sitting is so easy because you just want to keep going and find out what's going on. I've read every single book so far in this challenge in one sitting because I feel like if I like stretch it out towards like if I stretch it out for the entirety of the day I'm gonna spend my my entire day on edge. So I usually read them in one sitting. It's very easy. Most of these books have been like within the two hundred to three hundred page range like they average out that much so like I think the birthday twin it's not called the birthday twin what is it called none of this is true the none of this is true book was like three hundred something the last word was three hundred something the rock paper scissors was two hundred and ninety something and this one and this one and this one is I think three hundred and ninety something no three hundred and thirty four I think so very easy to read in one sitting because they're not the biggest books and also the plot keeps you interested long enough to read to continue reading Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like where this is going. Ew. Ah. Oh. What? That is sick. What? You are sick and twisted in the head. <gasps> Crazy. What? Ah, ah, ah! Can some ah? Sick, sick and twisted in the head. Oh, I feel sick. I feel nauseated. I feel disgusting. What? Ew. Ugh. Ugh. God, I feel sick. So I finished this book, basically. I don't even, those last 10 pages? Someone really, guys, actually though, people can actually really be sick and twisted this way. 
And that's what makes it even worse. Cause I know shit like this happens in real life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is so messed up. Ew. I think I'm giving this 4.25 stars just because I was like engaged in the entirety of the story and I still didn't see the end coming. Not even a singular clue. I, maybe I'm just really bad at like picking up clues. If you've read this book, did you pick up on the clues? Or is that just me? I didn't pick up on the thing. That, that was the last. I kind of had an idea, but not in the way that it happened. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. 4.25 stars. I'm gonna need a moment. And then I'll come back and we'll discuss what the hell did I just read? We are back to discuss the absolute horror, pardon the pun, that has been this past week where I read the five most recommended, most talked about thriller, psychological thriller, suspense, horror books. I don't know what to call it. Is there a difference between horror and thriller? Someone please let me know. Because in my head, they're the same thing. So if they're not, I apologize. But in my head, this is what I think when I think horror slash thriller slash suspense slash psychological thriller. To me, they're one and the same. Um, that might be wrong. That might not be what you think. That's just what I think. So let's discuss what I thought of the books and this past week that I did. I will say it's been a lot more successful than I thought it would be because as I've said a million and one times in this video, I don't technically gravitate towards that genre or those multiple genres in in a general sense i don't really think oh i'm thinking of picking up a book let me pick up a suspense or a thriller um and i don't even even in halloween like or like around the fall time i don't really gravitate towards horror movies or thriller books or thriller movies or psychological thriller movies i'm not really that girl i don't like it i like i like romance i like fantasy i like a little bit of you know enemies to lovers. I don't like horror slash thriller. So with that being said, this week did go a lot better than I thought it would. Um, I read each one of these books in one sitting, respectively, when I picked them up over the past week. I did this challenge from Monday to Friday. Today is Friday and I just read the f and finished the final book. So let's talk about it. The first book that I picked up was None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. Jewel. I don't really know how to say their name, sorry. As you can tell, I enjoyed it, I liked it, I took off some points for the ending because I felt like it was yeah. but uh, otherwise, other than that, I really enjoyed it, I liked it, it read very quickly, uh, I believe this one was about the birthday twin and I, <laughs> I was a little stressed out reading this book. I felt like my life was being like threatened basically while reading this book. I don't know if that was because it was my introduction to this video or because it's just actually that good. Uh, I would love to see this being made into a movie actually. Uh, I take that back because I probably would not watch it if it was made into a movie. I felt very uneasy reading this book and reading what was happening and how messed up people can be. Uh, 3.5 stars, I enjoyed it. It was definitely a very good introduction to this video. Then we have The Last Word by Taylor Adams. I gave this one 3.5 stars as well. I enjoyed this. I read this in one sitting as well. Uh, this one made me very uneasy because I am a reader myself and I give one stars to books sometimes on Goodreads. Uh, so this makes me double think that. I'm not gonna lie. I did like the little uh, acknowledgement in the end when he's like, I know this is about an author like hunting down a reader for giving a bad review, but if you give this a bad review, I'm not gonna kill you or hunt you down. Uh, so that was nice. This one felt very high stakes, very scary, very scary because it's like, it's close to what I do in my day to day life. I did find myself having trouble in the beginning to grasp this story uh, because there's so much description in here but the twists and turns are definitely not ones that I saw coming uh that happens that happened with a lot of these books I did not see the twist coming I'm not one of those people who who's a genius and can guess this one was a lot more scary because it was a lot more gruesome and a lot more detailed when it came to the horror and the thriller aspect of it but other than that I enjoyed it 3.5 stars then we have my only dnf of this video which was the silent patient by alex Michaelid, Michaelids, 
Michaelides. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I DNF this one because the story didn't seem my type. I didn't really like it. It felt like it was dragging on. I read 80 pages of it or maybe 70 pages of it. And I decided against it because I just was not interested in the story. It felt like it was dragging along. It felt like the premise wasn't really all that interesting to me. And all, and so far the other two that I'd read before this were interesting from the very get go. So I felt like I just was dragging my feet trying to read this book and I felt like it was going to give me a reading slump and I didn't want to get into a reading slump when I had two more books in this genre that I needed to read for this video. So I DNF'd it. Nothing to, nothing bad to say about it. It just wasn't my style. If this is your favorite book, that's good for you. I'm happy for you. Then we have Alice Feeney, Rock, Paper, Scissors, which I gave four stars. This one was the one. This one was it. This one kept me interested. This one kept me involved in the plot. The last 50 pages had me on the edge of my seat. I enjoyed this so much. The twists, the turns, I understand now why people praise Alice Feeney and her writing and her way of telling a story. Cause this one, I just did not see the end coming at all. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I definitely like did not check my phone while I was reading this. I didn't feel bored. I didn't feel annoyed. I didn't feel like, when is the story gonna progress? Every, like it just kept going and going and I thought I knew what was going on and then I didn't and then it just got worse and worse and worse and I think that speaks for how good the book is. Um, I've read a lot of books and I still wasn't able to see what was happening and what the, the ending was going to be. Um, I enjoyed it very much. Definitely four stars. And then the last book I read for this challenge was The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. Girl, girl, you saw my reaction to this. You saw my reaction. Uh, I don't need to say anything about this other than the fact that this one was twisted in every sense of the word. This one was twisted. This one was messed up. This one was so wrong in so many ways and yet so good and I couldn't get myself to stop reading. I enjoyed this so much. I ate it up. I honestly, genuinely, I did not think I would enjoy it as much as I did. I gave it 4.25 stars. Uh, this one was the highest rated out of all of these five that I've read. We were trying to find out obviously who killed the mistress of the guy and every guess I had was not, not it, not it at all. Not even, it was in the ballpark, but not really, not in the way that it happened. Definitely shook me to my core. This one was twisted. This one made me think like, wow, there are some twisted people out there in the world. Uh, yeah, this one made me uneasy. This one made me gasp and like just feel so bad and like I want to get out of my skin because people are so horrendous sometimes. Out of all the five that I've read in this challenge, let me give you my recommendations. So in third place, we have None of This Is True. And in second place, actually, I believe, no, in second, mm, you know what, I don't want to put a second place. I'm going to put them tied for first place. We have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney and The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. I think these are so well done, so beautiful. I am so jealous of everyone who's going to read them for the first time if they haven't read them yet. Um, definitely, definitely messed up. Definitely read the trigger warnings. I enjoy these so very much. I am so glad I picked them up. I understand why people talk a lot about Alice Feeney's writing and I understand why I see this literally everywhere I go, every bookstore, every Target, every Walmart. This book is front and center. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want me to do a part two of any of these genre videos, let me know because I obviously love doing these. They get me out of a like a funk that I'm in. I've done a Dark Academia Reads. I've done a romance one. I've done um, the top five book talk books. And now I've done the horror, thriller, psychological thriller ones. Uh, I will link all the other ones down below if you want to see them. Uh, let me know if you have a genre that you would like me to read. I don't really read a lot of mystery. So I don't see myself reading five mystery novels because I feel like I feel like that is a setup for a reading slump. I would love to do like a part two of either The Dark Academia or this one even. If you have any more recommendations, let me know. If I get enough, then maybe I can make another five, a, a list of five and end up doing another part two to this or any other video. It was definitely out of my comfort zone for sure. But I had a lot of fun doing it and I had a lot of fun reading these books and stepping into something that I've never stepped into before. I think I believe before I only ever read really YA like thrillers and I loved those. So this was definitely new. Definitely stepping out of my comfort zone and I had a good time. So at least there's that. Please step out of your comfort zone every now and then and read something that you haven't ever read before or something that you would never, maybe I'll do a video where I read five classics. That will be interesting. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched all the way to the end. I hope you have the best day ever. Treat yourself to something nice and I'll see you guys again next week with another video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.